Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwenta G Show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today I've got uh, something very special in mind because uh, we're going to be playing Nilfgaard, which is uh, which might surprise you because Nilfgaard is definitely not my favorite faction. But if you've uh, been on this channel for quite a while, you know that when I play Nilfgaard, most of the time I'm going to be playing Assimilate. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today because Assimilate kind of got a bit more support uh, with the latest new additions to Nilfgaard and uh, we're going to be using those almost all of them I think there's one card no there's two cards that we actually actually don't use but use the two gold cards so uh, from uh, today in today's episode your deck is going to be my deck yeah because today I made it extra confusing with the uh, name of the deck because the name of the deck is the your deck is my deck deck Yes, I said deck a lot, but it's an assimilate deck that has a lot of spying support as well. So you're going to be seeing that a lot and just in total a very huge amount of assimilate and spying units. Uh, we have a lot of tools to play with our opponent's cards, uh, especially, and a little bit with our own deck as well, as you will see in a second. This is the deck list. You can find this deck list in the link in the description that links you to the Play Grant website and there you can import this deck. Um, I'm gonna go through each and every single card one by one as usual, but if you're not interested, as always, you can uh, just skip to the example matches using the timeline down below. So uh, yeah, see you guys in a second if you're gonna skip. Otherwise, we're still here, so we're just gonna go through the uh, through all the cards. So from the bottom to the top, our first four provision card is the Mage Infiltrator. One power, but of course it's a disloyal unit, so a spying unit that you put on your opposing, well, your opponent's side of the board. And on deploy, she damages the adjacent units by three. So basically giving you five points uh, in total, because of course you give your opponent a point. Um, but those double tree damage can definitely take out some of the uh, stronger bronze engine cards in a lot of decks like the Whispers for Squirtel, the uh, Self Eaters uh, from Monsters or the Andrega Larva. Just a lot of things that you can do with this. And this also gives you the option to use her with Bratens in case you really want to. Same reason for the Emissary. So the Emissary is the same. It's also a disloyal unit, but on deploy you boost an allied unit by seven, uh, which means that you get six points out of this card. Again, this will also give you this option when you play Bratens, um, which we'll talk about in a minute if you don't know what Bratens, well, who Bratens is and what Bratens can do. Then we have a double Imperial Diplomacy. This is a tactic card, which allows you to create and play a bronze special card from your opponent's faction. Of course, this is an assimilate deck, so we're gonna try and play as many cards of our opponent as we can. And Imperial Diplomacy has been, uh, has received a provision buff uh, lately. I don't know if it was this latest patch or the one before that, but it went from five to four, making this a very strong card in assimilate decks. There's two of them, because that also means that if you manage to get Simlas from a Squirtel deck, you can just play both of Pale Diplomacies from your deck in one go, so you have an option for that as well. Then of course we have a double Duchess Informant, uh, also a disloyal unit of one power, you put that on your opponent's side of the board, and when that happens you can choose a bronze card on their side of the board and spawn and play a base copy of that unit on your side of the field, which uh, just allows you to take advantage of your opponent's cards. Then we have the Seditious Aristocrats. There's a lot of spying units in this deck as well. Uh, we just talked about three already, but there's also a few ways to apply spying on enemy units. And uh, as you can see, they're discussing a lot of the, uh, yeah, I think plans to kill Fergus Varemri. As you can see his portrait in the back there as well. But four power for five provisions. On deploy, you boost yourself by one for every spying enemy unit. And as a passive ability, you also gain a point whenever you, um, well, an enemy unit gains spying, so including your disloyal cards. So this can be very powerful. Most of these will play for around 10 to 12 points uh, when played in a longer round. Then we have the Imperial Diviner, our first Assimilate unit. So Assimilate, if you're not familiar with the concept, Assimilate means that this unit will boost itself by one whenever you play a, a card a card that's important whenever you play a card that was not in your starting deck so whenever you're playing copies of things uh cards from your opponent's side of the board or um any other cards then you will get an extra point on the imperial diviner on top of that she also has a deploy ability where you can purify a unit you can do this twice because this card is double in the deck then we have her evil counterpart well although the um <laughs> I must say the Imperial Diviner also looks a bit evil, but it's basically uh, SR um, 
because she has the weird hairdo over there, so I don't know why this is just the Imperial Divining. Um, but Mage Torture, so the, the uh, more evil version of um, the Imperial Diviner. 5 power for 5 provisions, has Veil and Assimilate, so can be targeted by status effects, and also boosts yourself by 1 for every card that you don't have in your deck that you play. And on deploy you also give an enemy unit spying, so a lot of tools in this single card. So. You give uh, a status effect to an opponent, you can be targeted by status effects yourself, and you gain extra points for every, um, well, card that is not in your starting deck. Now we have Amnesty. Amnesty is very um, powerful in this meta. So Amnesty is a tactic for six provisions where you can seize an enemy unit with three power or less. And uh, on Devotion, I mean on Conspiracy as well, but we have a Devotion deck here, you uh, always trigger the Conspiracy ability, which means that we also boost it by two. So this is an eight point card for six provisions. Very good against Quartel to take out those Whisperers and take them for yourself. And you trigger them in one go as well if you seize them because the tactic itself also counts as a special card. Uh, but can also be, be used to steal a Madoc uh, or something else like that. It's just a really versatile card against those pesky tree power cards of your opponent. Then we have Roldwick of Duntine, a bit of a consistency card, a 2 power disloyal unit, so you also play this guy on your opponent's side of the board, but on deploy you look at two random gold cards from your deck and you play one of them. So basically a tutor card, but a tutor card that gives your opponent two extra points. Uh, one if you have a seditious aristocrat on the board of course, so that is important to keep in mind. Now we have Albridge, a 4 power for 6 provision card, a mage that on deploy, if you put him on the range row, you move any card from your deck to the top. If it's a unit, you boost that unit by 2 as well. So very good to use as a pass card, so that means that you ha are guaranteed to pull the next card, well, the card that you selected in the next round. Um, and you can even just select any card, uh, it's just that if it is a unit, you can boost it by 2 as well. Now we have Cantarella, I still really like Cantarella, just a random madness of Cantarella. So also a one power disloyal unit for seven provisions that on deploy you play the top card from your opponent's deck. So fits really well with the Assimilate archetype and we might actually get something fancy from our opponent. But also very powerful if you're playing a mirror match against Nilfgaard where uh, your opponent might have used Yennefer's Invocation to put one of your board cards on top of their deck. And then you can play Cantarella to, to, just to steal that card again. Um, and get your cards back. Um, so yeah, just an extra tool for uh, melee matches, but also very useful to thin your opponent's deck a bit. Then the card that I used as the uh, the animated card on the play button. Fair card, three power, seven provisions, and on the play you play a special card from your hand and then draw a card. So basically hand thinning. Uh, it's not like you pull something from the deck directly, but you play a card from your hand and then pull another card from the deck. Whenever you play a special card, he also has a passive ability uh, because he will give spying to random non-spying enemy units. So this is also a spying engine basically uh, dealing out those status effects like they were candy. Then of course the assimilate, the very strong assimilate unit. So Artorius Vigo 2 power assimilate for 8 provisions and on deploy you create and play a 1 power copy of a bronze unit from your starting deck. There are, uh, in this deck, six options for that card. So it's either going to be the Imperial Diviner, the Mage Torturer, or the Ser Seditious Aristocrat, or one of the three spying units that we talked about. So the Duchess Informant, the Emissary, and or the um, Mage, uh, I think it's not Assassin, but yeah, the, the Lady Woman with the, the six damage. Um, so if you can grab a spying unit with this, you don't have to change the power, and you trigger Assimilate twice, because the spying unit is new, and if it's a Duchess Informant, you can copy another Bronze unit and trigger Assimilate again. So Artorius can be very powerful, but of course it's a bit of a random shoot. Uh, but regardless what unit you get, it's always going to be powerful enough to get give you the points that you need. Then of course it's still an assimilate deck, so bribery is also very good. Eight provisions and create and play a unit from your opponent's starting deck. Bribery tends to give you the option of the gold cards more than the bronze cards, but it could still be an option of three bronze cards. This could be crappy. Um, but more often than not, this is just a very powerful card, giving you some of the strongest cards from your opponent to choose from. Um, and it is just really, really good. Then another tactic, Coup de Grasse. It's the Echo card for Nilf card. You damage an enemy unit by three, and if you manage to kill it, you spawn and play a base copy of it. You can do that on spying units, 
um, which will always trigger the dead blow ability regardless of whether you killed it or not. This allows you to either replay one of your disloyal unit that you already played, so Cantarella for example, Joachim de Wet in a minute as well, or you apply spying to a unit that you're really interested in, like one of your opponent's legendary cards, and then just steal it with coup de grace, well copy it with coup de grace in the next turn. So both options work and you can use this card twice in the same match, because it come back, comes back to your deck after the, um, the the round that you played it in. Then we talked about it a little bit already, Yennefer's Invocation, a spell where you place an enemy unit at the top of your own deck. This is very strong because it's basically tall removal, you can choose whatever your opponent has on the board and just say, okay, that card is now uh, mine, it's going to be on my uh, deck. Uh, and just remove it. So yeah, a very, very powerful special card that will of course also uh, trigger for card. And now we have Bratens, we talked about him uh, a while back at the beginning of this card list. Four power for 10 provisions, has assimilate himself and on deploy you create and play a bronze disloyal unit from your starting deck. So this is what I was talking about. Because we have all three bronze disloyal units in our deck, you can choose whatever you want to play, whatever fits best. So if you don't have a bronze target, for example, Duchess Informant would be useless, so you can go with uh, the Emissary giving you seven extra points. Um, or you can go for the mage where you can give uh, your opponent a little, bit, a little bit more damage. All of those are options that are really well suited for Bratens. Bratens is also assimilated, so whenever when he plays that disloyal unit, he will also trigger his own assimilate again. And Joachim de Wet, we also talked about him, the four power disloyal unit, so you give your opponent four points, but on deploy you play the top non-disloyal unit from your deck and boost it by eight. There's two ways of uh, for you to guarantee which card is on top of your deck, so either you go with Albridge, uh, which is a card from your own deck, or you go with Yennefer's Invocation, where you st you've stolen a card from your opponent, put that on top of your own deck, and then you play it again, and boost it by a whopping 8 as well, um, with Joachim de Wet. So very powerful, and you can play him twice if you could aggross him afterwards, as long as he's either 3 power or below, or of course still has the this loyal uh, tag, so the spying status effect. And then the new card, one of the new cards, Arto Terra Nova. Very, very powerful new assimilate card. So, again, he has assimilate. 4 power for 12 provisions, but on deploy you spawn and play a copy of any non-disloyal unit you gave spying to during this game, excluding self. So you can never do that with himself, but any other card during the entire match that you've given spying to, so whatever golden, shiny, legendary card that your opponent had that you gave spying to, you will be able to play a copy of it. Um, which is just immense. Uh, this is why this deck is called Your Deck is Mine Deck, my deck, because uh, I am going to play basically all cards that your opponent, that the opponent can throw at me, as you'll see in the example matches. And then the final one uh, can be omitted as well in any Nilfgaard deck, I think. The Usurper himself, the Usurper Emperor, of course, because this is a Devotion deck, so he will go all the way. Very powerful card in this deck to start with in the final round. So Usurper Emperor has Veils, who can be targeted by status effects. On deploy, you spawn an operative on each enemy row, so those are those three power agents. They all have spying, so if you still have any Seditious Aristocrats on the board, those will gain two extra points. And on Zeal, uh, you have an order ability where you seize all the spying operatives. Another passive ability is that whenever you play an agent, boost self by one. All of our disloyal units, well, almost all of them, are uh, agents. So that fits in really, really well. This card can go to the moon points-wise, especially if you start factoring in this, the fact that you can spawn more Duchess Informants and stuff like that, more disloyal units, uh, this can be really, really powerful. And then our Stratagem card gives us a little bit of control where we lock an enemy unit and damage it by three, so uh, pretty simple. Now we didn't talk about our leader ability just yet, but of course we're going with Assimilate, so we're going with Double Cross, where we create and play a card from our opponent's hand. You only get three options, so if you wait until the three last cards of your opponent, then you're guaranteed to pick those three cards, otherwise those three cards will be random from your opponent's hand, and you don't know, well you never know what you're gonna get, which is the fun thing um, about this deck, because uh, it is like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're gonna deck gonna deck yeah that's you never know what you're gonna get i saw deck again and i just kept saying deck okay that was the uh, deck overview so uh let's head into a few example matches <laughs> god damn it so first up seems to be Atticus swarm 
So monsters, but not force of nature. That's gonna be interesting. So we're getting a pretty gold-filled hand. I'm gonna get rid of that second seditious aristocrat. We don't really need two of them. We get Gantarella, which we'll only be able to use once probably, but we do get archery assimilate units, so might want to be careful here to not overplay. Um, so I'll get rid of these seditious aristocrats and we get Yennefer's invocation. So with Otaka Swarm, is that just going to be... Hmm. So a lot of organics, of course, but other than that... I don't really see the use just yet. Let's start slow and just give that Archospore some spine. Now with Assimilate, the reason why I'm asking this, with Assimilate it's always important to know what your opponent is doing so you know what cards to expect, so you know how to uh, formulate the, your game plan. I think there's a few cards that we can definitely benefit from here. Because um, Yennefer, they probably have Yennefer in there. Uh, Yennefer Vankerberg, and we can just turn that around if we're able to. I could grab the Griffin, but I think for now just Artorius into something. Another Mage Torture? Yeah, that's gonna be fine. So let's just put a one power Mage Torture on the board, and that just triggers Assimilate twice on our current board. So we're chugging along just fine. We have three Assimilate units on the board because of Artorius. And that's enough engine potential to keep us going, I think. And we get Whisper's Tribute, that is probably... Ooh, Parasite. So Parasite on our top torturer. Seems a bit early to me to start doing things like that. But fair enough. Um, I'm gonna go with Cantarella. I wanna see what our opponent has in their deck. Um, if it's something useless... Yeah, Dorgare is pretty useless at the moment. Um, but I can just lock something with that then, and it's gonna trigger Assimilate regardless, so... Good, good, good. Uh, is probably gonna get consumed now, uh, or not. We're gonna just get hit by a bunch of guards. Okay. I don't have Coup de Grasse in hand just yet, but the amount of gold cards in our deck is limited. There's only four left, so the chances of me getting Coup de Grasse are 50-50. So let's put down the Roderick card and then we're getting neither okay hmm I don't want to use Yennefer's invocation yet so I'm just gonna use Albridge put him on the ranged row um, and then set for card up top there we go that should be good and then I'm just gonna pass next turn um, we don't really get too lucky with the cards that we received. We can double play Cantarella. Um, so yeah, we just have to see in the next round. They took a card and then went for Spontaneous Evolution, of course, filling the board immediately with Arakas drones. Yeah, I think that's gonna be it for me. Uh, they're just gonna outpace me now, so I'm just gonna pass. And there we go, lost round one, but that was to be expected um, since our opponent had the first go. And Arakas Swarm is actually a pretty tough matchup for us now, because we're gonna have to try and swarm them ourselves, so they have a limited amount of other cost swarms. But on top of that, we won't have a lot of space to put spying units on there as well. Um, which might be annoying. Let's get rid of the Imperial Diviner. Purifying isn't gonna really help us. Amnesty is gonna be okay. So this is Aristocrats. Fine, I suppose. I'm just gonna get rid of the uh, Duchess Informant. And we get another one. Never mind. <laughs> Okay, we get Brewers. Brewers is... Yeah, does what Brewers does best, I suppose. Um, I actually don't have a really good card to use now. I'm gonna just put down Seditious Aristocrats. That's four points. If our opponent now passes, we know what to do. We still haven't gotten... Um, we still haven't gotten Coup de Grasse. Which is annoying. But I'm just really curious what our opponent is gonna do now. Is gonna pass, okay. Uh, Amnesty is useless. And all the other cards I really don't wanna use. Hmm, so yeah, Yennefer's Invocation seems like the only way to go here. That would be annoying, because I can use her to get rid of a Glusty Werp, so I'm just gonna go with Joachim. Since we don't have a Coup de Grasse, it doesn't really seem like too much of a problem to do this right now. And if we still get Coup de Grasse, fair enough, we can still use it. 
But I think this was the best option. Uh, all the other cards we really want to use or are useless and there of course, of course we get Coup de Grasse now. Um, the Emissary is useless. Bribery is really good. We still have Arto, we still have Bratens and we still have the Usurper. Uh, do I need that Touches Informant? I don't think I do because I have one in Bratens as well. And another one in Coup de Grasse if I really want to. But keep the Purify. No, I'm going to get rid of the Purify. There we go. Okay, so, um, first up is gonna be the Usurper Emperor. I don't want to brick this card, so it's just gonna go on the board and give me those 12 points. Now, as I said before, the Emperor is really good as an engine card because all the agents will boost this card. We have, um, for card is not an agent, but the Duchess Informant is. Um, Arto Taranova is not one either, but Bratens is, and of course the Duchess Informed is one as well, so he will take that twice. On Coup de Grasse that can happen again, so there's plenty of... Ooh. That might be really good. So Mamuna. But Mamuna I really need to apply spying to first, but I can actually do that. I'm gonna have to be careful here, but I do want to use for cards and start applying some spying. And it's probably best to use Bratons first. I can use Bratons on the Griffin. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So yeah, let's use Bratons. Uh, Duchess Informant on the Griffin and get the Griffin over here and destroy one of the operatives. There we go. That's good. And then Weavis is boosting the Duchess Informant. That is fine. Um, which doesn't give us a good target yet for um, Amnesty. That's not that much of a problem. I want to save Coup de Grasse. Although I could actually just do it already. It's used for card. Uh, and for card can use Imperial Diplomacy. Yeah, let's use Imperial Diplomacy. We get Seritish's Aristocrats in return. Um, and we can actually get the Nekerat. The Nekerat is actually pretty good. That's some bleeding on the board. So we can take out some of the units on our opponent's side of the board. There we go. We actually applied spying to the Griffin this time. I'd like to have spying on Mamuna. If that doesn't happen, I can still grab Mamuna with Yennefer's Invocation, but I can't really get her back anymore. I could have done that first. I could have grabbed Mamuna with Yennefer's Invocation and then get um, Mamuna in hand with her card. Kind of misplayed that a little bit, but it's fine so far, I think. So since we already have um, two spying units, do I put Seditious Aristocrats down? Basically at equal points at the moment. Uh, so I might as well do that, I guess. There we go, so that goes up to six. Also Agents, so those also count for the Usurper. Now Vesper skills the Seditious Aristocrats, okay. That's fine. That's fine. Still don't really have a good option to uh, put Amnesty on. Yeah, I'm just going to grab another griffin um, like this and eat that other operative over here. That is A-OK. -okay. And we get Xavier Lemons. That's a weird choice for a deck like this. He's banishing cards from his own graveyard. Interesting. Um, Amnesty is still not an option. We haven't given spying to anything useful just yet. There's nothing bronze coming in either. So I think I'm just going to use Bribery now. I quickly want to check. If I get Mamuna, do I still have... No, I can't actually use Mamuna. Well, I can, but not properly. Uh, so let's just use Bribery. And we got Glusty. Uh, Glusty, I think, is the way to go, because I can destroy all the one-powered units on your opponent's side. There we go. Three units down there and we get six points for that in return and we got spying on weavers now still not the best and i don't really have a target anymore to eat the griffin with uh to eat for the griffin because the griffin needs something to eat to actually be put on the board that is really funny and we got mirta brakke I've seen that used more and more because Mirta Brock is actually good against uh, Gurney Cora as well. Let's grab Arto now. Although I could try with Double Cross. But I should probably play Arto first. Yeah, I can't use Mamuna properly, so I'm just going to use Arto now first. 
Uh, Arto gives us Weavis, I think that's going to be the best option. Yeah, Weavis. Um, and with that, we can just boost the... Yeah, for guard back to full. And then I'm just going to use... Ooh, Karate Heatwave and Scorch. So Karate Heatwave now on um, Mamuna. That's going to split up the cards a little bit, but I need to be careful now because there is a Scorch on the field. Uh, well, in hand. I might actually brick um, Amnesty here. So now we get Karate on the Usurper. So Amnesty is useless. I know there's a Glusty still coming. So Glusty, I will not be able to counter. So Yennefer's Invocation is also going to be useless. Yeah, I think it's going to be Coup de Grasse into yeah so could a grass into weavis weavis is gonna give us a boost i think that is yeah uh so a boost up to 10 and nothing more because otherwise certain cards ah now it's gonna get scorched yeah we're gonna get scorched now so that's gonna be 24 points gone i should have played the duchess informant probably uh but yeah now we can use amnesty on weavis and that gives us a 20 point advantage and we can kill the highest unit on the board now. So they still have Glusty, but they'll probably use Glusty at the very end with the, um, the Articles drones. So Glusty is going to be 5, 6, 16 points. With, it's only going to be 16 points because there's nothing else for them to take. So we get Oneromancy. What is that going to be? Oh, Lacerate. Okay, fair enough. That gives them another drone. It might actually be really close. There's five drones with another one. It's six drones. Uh, Glusty is six itself and another six on top of that. So that's 18 points. So I think if I calculated this correctly, it's going to be exactly equal. It's going to be equal. So one, two, three, four, and five drones. And then Glusty on top of that, because we know it's in his hand, in their hand. So that's going to be 40. Oh, I kind of miscalculated there. Oh, so is Glusty 5 base? I don't know what the base is of Glusty, but that we, we just won that, just barely. That was a, a really fun match to, uh, to guide through, because I didn't know really what to expect aside from the, the Glusty. Next up, we have another monster. So we have the White Frost ability. So a lot of frost on the board, but also a lot of cards that we'll be able to steal that just uh, benefit immensely from, uh, well, will benefit us immensely from getting them to our team. I don't think I really need the Mage Infiltrator. Seizing might be interesting. Um, maybe not immediately, but it might be interesting. Um, let's get... Yeah, let's keep the Duchess Informant and let's get rid of the... Okay. So we can just play their game. It's going to be a lot of row effects and we're going to have to try and balance everything out. We have quite a bit of... Um, ooh. Wow. Um, we have a bit of experience with... Uh, I was going to say we have a bit of experience with um, weather decks. So this is going to be interesting. Can't really take it out just yet, but I can give it spying so that it is added to the pool of our toe later on. So might as well. I wonder what they're trying to do here. Like it, they're gonna try and get Sabbath in just a single turn. No, okay. The Wild Hunt Hound with Dominance. Fair enough. It's not something that we can really steal what we can't steal, but it's gonna be pretty useless to do so. And that's exactly all that we have, because I could just try with Artorias, but Artorias is gonna be a big waste in this first round. Let's grab Artorias anyway. Let's see what we get. We get the Mage Infiltrator. I'm going to do the Mage Torture again, just giving us those three engines um, and just apply spying to the Wild Hunt Hound. It's not going to matter because it's failed, of course, but at least we get some units on the board. So we got a bit of icing on our side of the board, nothing to be alarmed about, but we can also use that. So let's use the Duchess Informant, grab the Nagelfar's crew, 
and put that on the other side here. So that will boost that card by one every single turn because of the fact that there's frost on the other side of the board. And now, of course, the Wygern is going to start getting a beating. So I'm assuming they will start to consume it anytime soon. Sometime soon. Maybe. Eventually. We get Gals. That's probably going to be... Yep. Yeah, Art Gate. And another Frost on the board. Now, we still have those Assimilate units on the board. So that is... Good. I think I'm just going to use Cantarella. So let's use Cantarella and see what we're getting. We're getting... Oh, that's not a problem. Um, because we also have Devotion deck. So that's just going to stay there. And we're 13 points behind. And there's still a lot of frost on our side of the field, so... Might be slightly problematic. We get Kikimori Worker, that's another 7 points striking the tribe of... Um, yeah, the uh, Winter Queen in the back there. Also doubling up on all of the engines that are on the board, so... I don't think we're gonna be making this in this round, so let's pass. And there we go, our opponent passes as well, and we lost round 1. But uh, with a severe point difference, so I think we uh, lured out a lot of good cards from our opponent there. We get Briatons, which is always good. We get Imperial Diplomacy is not going to be that useful. And I think Amnesty might have to go as well. There's no real use for it here. We get Coup de Grasse instead, which is really good. Um, do we need to... I'll keep the Purifier in case we get a Defender. And an Imperial Diplomacy swapped out for the Usurper, so that is completely perfect. We get a Wild Hunt Hound, if only I had <laughs> that Amnesty. Although Amnesty wouldn't have mattered, it's at 4 power already. Want to see what our opponent really does, so let's just put Albridge down. And the only real good card is for cards still left. So there we go. And so now if our opponent passes, we can just use the Imperial Diviner if they don't. And they don't. There we go, and that's what the Defender was for. Uh, so let's purify that thing out of the way. Um, I could already double cross, but that's a bit too soon, I think. We get the Ancient Foglet, which will boost itself by the amount of weather effects being applied. So there we go, that's two applied already. And we're getting damaged severely here. Um... Does he actually care? On the opposite side, yeah, he does care. We've actually put down for cards at the top of our deck, so I am gonna put down Joachim now. Put for card on the board at 13 points. And then Coup de Grasse, I suppose. Yeah, Coup de Grasse into Joachim again. And put them down as well. And get the Seditious Aristocrats on the board. I'm gonna put that over here. And that's another 15 points, so I think that was a good point swing that we really needed, because otherwise our opponent is going to take the lead a bit too far. And now we also have Dominance, so our opponent really can't work with that anymore. We get another Ancient Foglet, which will boost itself by one, and then maybe another Weather Effect. No, they're going to swap one back. So there we go, and that's all their Weather Effects gone. I'm gonna go all out with Bratens now, so I'm gonna use Bratens, use the Duchess Informant and use it on one of those ancient foglets, um, which I can put just over here, that doesn't really matter. It's not gonna get boosted just yet, but remember I can play a lot of cards that our opponent is also using, so uh, I'm definitely gonna do that in a minute. And there we get, um, yeah, Aridin, that was to be expected, but they don't have Dominance. For now, at least. Um, so they can't really do anything with that just yet. Uh, I have two assimilate units on the board. So that means I'm just going to double cross. So I'm going to bribery first. Bribery is going to do... Ooh. Ooh. Unseen Elder. Like uh, this. And then I think... Yeah, so now I can use Art Gate... To just put an immense amount of frost on the other side and also boost our foglet. And they're just going to keep getting uh, bled down as well. So there we go. I think the push was enough. They're going to get another 12 point boost from that. And now they have dominance as well. So we're going to have to be careful here. Um, but Eridan is now 
spying. So I'm gonna just get another one of those uh, ancient foglets on my side of the board here. That's another nice batch of points. Sadly, it is constantly the NCNL that goes for the veiled ancient foglets. So that's not that good. I'm really hesitating whether I should burn Arto now. But the Wild Hunt Bruiser is going to swap out KDNC and Elder. And gets us back to even. I'm going to put down the Imperial Diviner first. Um, I want to purify. It doesn't really matter what I purify here. And that just gives me a little bit of an advantage. Because even now, the Frost is not going to be enough. Though, so they need to play another card. And then I can just play Arto. So Ozgad is going to grab Vigan, of course. Uh, but I can do the same. Uh, so I'm just going to put Arto over here. And he can actually grab... I can actually choose. Eredin would probably not be enough. So Wygon... I still have one card in hand. So Wygon is going to be A-OK. -okay. So there we go. There we go. And that is the end of our turn. That push was really necessary. Because our opponent was pretty aggressive on their turn. But there we go, we got a few other points from the bleeding of the Unseen Elder that still triggers. But uh, there we go, won the round again. But we still have Usurper in hand, so Usurper is really, really good. We also have Art Gate, so I can start with that even. And then a Coup de Grasse. What do we still have? Not the best cards. So I had to get, I shouldn't get rid of Emissary, I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, let's just finish redrawing like this. I can go first. I'm just going to play Art Gate first. It's a really passive play. My cat really wants to get out of the room. I'm going to have to do that in a minute. But this is the match we're going to win. Definitely. So Andrega Larva on the Frost. Um, then I can play the Usurper Emperor. And get those cards back. So that's another 12 points. And Usurper is going to get boosted by every single agent that we're going to play. And there should be two more incoming. So yeah, either we lose the agent. Um, but I don't think we will. We can also grab an Andrega Larva if we really need to. But yeah, the Kikimore worker over there. And it's just the end of everything because we can just grab the emissary and then trigger this again there we go 25 19 against a pretty strong weather deck so i was hoping for a little bit more variety and finally i got it because the past few matches were all against monsters so squiatel invigorate that is interesting you don't see invigorate all that often um, but that would mean that I would be really, really looking for Amnesty here, because that's going to be Whisperers. I got Fricard, which is good. I'm going to start with Fricard. Um, but other than that, I can get rid of Seditious Aristocrats. Although if I get more Spying, that's not really useful. Um, let's get rid of Imperial Diviner. And, and then again. And then we get not. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. It is what it is. We got what we wanted, I think. I can always start with Arthorius Vigo into the Elven Seer, maybe. If I can get a, a Duchess Informant out of Arthorius. So let's try this. We don't. What I do get is another Mage Torture. So let's do that. I'm not going to be able to give it Spying, of course, because it's failed. But it's better than nothing and it's a second Disseminate Engine. There's going to be a lot of special cards in this deck, so I'm going to have to be really careful. I think they just used one of their leader ability charges. There we go. So that's going to be boosting five units in their hand. And they're doing it again. Okay. So they used both charges, which is not a problem in Invigorate, because that's just value at the start. And we get the Whisper of Dolbladana. That was probably smart to do that first. Now, let's play for a card. And use the Imperial Diplomacy card. We get another Imperial Diplomacy. Um, and we get... Yeah, I'm going to grab the Dwarven Berserker then. It's not the best card, but there we go. 
start to deal damage. And of course the Whisperer is gonna do a lot now. So they're gonna use this first Orb of Insight and we're gonna get a second one. So they're gonna get multiple Whisperers as well. Um, yeah, all of those are also um, veiled. So I can do Coup de Grasse and do this, and then I have a Whisper of my own, and their Whisper stream is down. And we still get the damage ticks from the Dwarven Berserker, and now the Dwarven Berserker dies. I would have killed that actually, but hey, I'm not them. Um, that we still have it in hand, might as well use Imperial Diplomacy, it counts as a special card. And we get the Elven Seer, the Dryad Ranger, or the Double Tunnel Sentry. I might as well grab the Elven Seer here and put it over there. So we kind of got the upper hand there. But it's definitely not going to be enough. Um, I have two useless cards in my hand right now because I can't, I mean, give spying to anything. So for card was also kind of a waste. And then I get Falv. Falv is gonna be the second special card, so Isengim's Council into another Whisper of the Blatana. They're back, and that triggers the next Orb of Insight, which triggers the next Orb of Insight, which triggers the next Orb of Insight. No, not, not another one, no. Okay, fair enough. I think I'm just gonna use Albridge now. Let's use Albridge. And put the... Uh, you shouldn't use Albridge on Usurper, by the way, because when he transforms into his next phase, the two points will be gone. So I'm just going to boost Arto over here. And that is going to be it. I can't really do anything else, so unless our opponent now passes, I am going to be the one that passes. And then we get Oneiromancy. Oneiromancy going to grab something really good, I'm assuming. And also giving them the consistency at the end to get um, gored out. We get another Nature's Rebuke, so another special card. And that is that. So yeah, I'm not going to be winning this first round. There we go. Let's pass pretty far behind. Um, but we're going to get most of our good cards in hand here, so that is going to be a good start. A lot of Nature's Rebukes have been gone already, because I think that was the second Nature's Rebuke that was gone. We get Coup de Gras again, we get Arto, so the first two cards were guaranteed. And now, do I get rid? I'm gonna get rid of the Seditious Aristocrats and the Emissary. Yeah, we got Amnesty now, so in case there's another Whisperer, but I don't think there is. All the Whisperers are gone. Are they really gonna go for it? I'm looking at the amount of gold cards left. I uh, have five. Would are really going for it? Let's try Roderick. Let's see what we get. We get. Cantarella of you or Usurper. Yeah, Cantarella then. Sadly, we didn't get uh, Yennefer's Invocation. So Cantarella into Simlos. Simlos is actually useless for us now. Because uh, we don't have any special cards left. So there we go. Kind of forgot to put the Imperial... Leave the Imperial Diplomacies in our deck. Because that would have been nice otherwise. But uh, now it's just a broken card. The Sorceress of Dolblatana now. I'm gonna grab that. So let's just use Bratens first, use the Duchess Informant on the Sorceress of Dolblatana, put her over here, and then use Double Cross immediately, use Oneiromancy, yep, there we go, that's the one I wanted. Use Oneiromancy, and we can actually use Yennefer's Invocation now to grab Francesca Thindabair. That was a pretty, pretty big play. We got lucky that we got Oneiromancy, because on Oneiromancy we could grab um, Yennefer's Invocation. There are three spying units on the board. They are checking which card to pull from the sorcerer, Sorceress, but she won't be able to grab an Nature's Rebuke because she's at 4 power. We do get Tempering, however. Uh, tempering putting Cantarella up to 6. And we get Dryad's Caress, which is purifying Cantarella. Okay, that was probably a smart move. Let's see, I can use the Sorceress of Dolblatana to get a way layout even. So what do we have on the board? Waylay would have been nice, but um, I'm gonna use Tempering. Uh, tempering on Simlas, so that's another five points. And then we use the Duchess Informant on the Sorceress of Dolblatana and boost her on the board again. I do love the fact that they're animated. <laughs> Those fishies are really, really cool. 
I haven't actually seen it because I don't think I have those animated. So it's the first time I'm actually seeing that animation with the blue fish all around her. That is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. That is really nice. So our coup de grace is not yet... Oh, it is doomed. So we need to be careful. Um, I don't think I want to use it then in this turn if I can avoid it. And our opponent will have to pass. There we go. Okay. That's good. That gives us card advantage in the final round. We got slightly lucky with our double cross. The fact that we got Oneiromancy means that we're also getting Oneiromancy now. Um, and we get Francesca now as well. So this might be huge. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the Seditious Aristocrats. Um, probably again. Do I want to risk Amnesty again? I'm going to risk it. I want to see what use this still gets me. So let's get rid. Ooh, that is... What a hand! What a hand! This is just probably the best hand that I could have gotten. Um, I can double bribery if I want to. So I start. So as usual, I'm going to start with the Usurper Emperor and just grab those cards to my side of the board. We might get some heavy hitters still coming in, but uh, for now we should be good. I'm going to play the Mage Torture next, because that gives us another Assimilate unit. And then we'll start playing around with... Yeah, with Francesca. So Call of the Forest into an Elven Seer. Can I do something against an Elven Seer? I don't think I can. So let's just use the Mage Torture so to give that lovely Seer some spying. And I could actually grab one as well. If I really wanted to. There's going to be a lot of orbs of insight left. But remember they don't have sim loss either. Ooh. I can't deal damage to that sadly. Um, I'm going to have to be careful with Francesca as well. Not to play that too early. Let's use the Duchess Informant actually. To grab that uh, Sorceress of Dolblatana. I'm going to trigger the Assimilate on the Mage Torsker. We didn't use any special cards just yet, so that is fine. There's two things that I can do, and I'm really... So I can either double Bribery, or I can play Joachim three times. So that gets purified, and that gets purified as well. That's not a problem. Absolutely not a problem. I wanted to keep that... ...delayed a little bit, and we get now Oneiromancy, and Oneiromancy is going to be... Ooh. Ooh, they don't they really don't have a lot of cards left. Oh, I'm really hoping that I can play this out then. So let's play Francesca. Let's use the sorceress. We get Whaley. Whaley is useless. So we're just gonna draw its caress, although draw its caress is also just. Yeah, let's use making a bomb. Um I can just use that on the sources of Dolblatana, that's four turns of bleeding. They did just use Dryad's Caress, so I don't think there's going to be another batch of purifying. Okay, we got Coyote on Francesca. Sadly, that would have been a really fun combo. Um, we could seize the sources now, but that's not really a problem, I think. On Aeromancy, uh, Joachim de Wet. Put that on the board over there. And then grab the Seditious Aristocrats, which will also count as an agent and go to 13 points. So then we get Gantero. Dim is gonna ooh, doom the Seditious Aristocrats. Um, I can't give anything else spying now. Oh, you know what? I'm. I, what am I doing? I can just uh, get a Diviner from the deck. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. We just have Diviners in the deck, so that's not really a problem. Because I, I knew from before that the, the chance was 50-50 that I was going to get a Diviner, so absolutely no problem at all. Because uh, Joachim gives you a non-disloyal unit. Uh, so there goes those four points and destroy another doomed unit. There we go. Yeah, might as well get Arto down now. So Arto is going to grab the Elven Seer, I suppose. We didn't really give, give something useful a, uh, a spying tag. And the last card is going to be Gord, so yeah, there we go. They knew that they weren't gonna go over that. So that was actually really cool. We managed to grab some really useful cards from our opponents and managed to counter them completely. 
So as you saw, this deck is really powerful, but it's really hard to explain how to use this deck properly. There's a few combos that you saw, like for example, using Fur Card first to then generate a lot of spying and using the Seditious Aristocrats. That's one way to go. Go in the direction of Assimilate and use that and use your opponent's card to cards to gain a lot of value is also an option. And then of course you have the combos with uh, Joachim, Yennefer's Invocation and Albridge to get a bit of deck manipulation going and stealing more cards that way. Those are some of the more mainstream, well, the, the, the high level tactics, but all of it comes down to a lot of knowledge of what your opponent can play. And that's something that I can't really relay in these deck guides. It's something that you'll have to experience over time. Uh, it's just because I know which cards that are coming that you can properly use this deck and use Assimilate. Because Assimilate is very, very strong. As you saw, I now played uh, four matches, one of them you didn't see was against Gurney Cora that just overblew me with a lot of points and I couldn't really counter that. But all the other decks uh, matches you just saw and it's just it's just really really good. You can play whatever your opponent plays as well and just counter them with their own tools. So this is the your deck is my deck and uh, this is also the end of the episode. But of course I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of uh, Gwent Edge again. It's been a while since I used Disseminate um, and, and Nilfgaard in, in its entirety, but I feel like it started to get more and more traction again, especially with the two new cards that were added. Uh, it just gets so much support now and it kind of starts to merge really well with Spying. So Spying and Disseminate combining that is just a really good way to give you a lot of tools and potential that you can use against your opponent. What did you think about this deck? Let me know in the comment section down below. We can discuss that further there. Give me any tips that you uh, can to improve this deck because that's what we're here for after all. We're trying to help each other out. Um, and that's it. Thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Grand Edge. Goodbye and stay nutty.